<clears throat> so Aaron left this morning and I'm headed over for an oil change. I am just 2,295 miles over to which is not like me. I'm typically better to my equipment than that. So I popped Moose in. I was going to bring one of the baby girls, but I'm running nine minutes late and I didn't have time to go get one of them out and he was handy. So I have someone in Georgia that's very interested in him and I am praying that if that is his new forever home, then that's where he's going to be going. So I apologize. I can see myself. I'm <laughs> just straightening my hat. So I wanted to, I got an email yesterday, and I have not said and answered it, because I had company <clears throat> yesterday, and it was good to get Aaron to come down and see me, and we popped up an hour-long kind of, sort of, question and answer, and the question was, are bull mastiffs good with children? And so, uh, I love hearing her insights into these things. My husband's calling me because I took Moose and he thinks Moose got away. <laughs> anyway, he'll figure it out. So, I'll be brief because he's still calling me. He doesn't know I took Moose. His truck was there. I thought he saw me. So I get this email yesterday, and if I can uh, tactfully and courteously address this mindset, which in my opinion is a bit incorrect. So the person, and, and nobody wants to, nobody wants to be told that how they think about things is not necessarily correct but it's still true and so don't be offended you know the the difference between ignorance and stupidity is ignorance is you just don't know stupidity is that you know better and you do it anyway or being unwilling to align yourself with the knowledge with knowledge and with the truth so here we go i'm sorry i'm warm and i'm trying to get out of this jacket and i'm failing miserably here so the email said my almost two-year-old two in january caboodle puppy was now dog laying on the floor and now all i have is what they told me i wasn't there I was laying on the floor my child runs in and slides beside the dog and partially on the dog. So they did admit that the child was partially on the dog. The dog turned and bit the child in the face. So, didn't break the skin, but this, the skin is swollen. And I take this very extremely seri serious, it's extremely serious. But, and so this was their question. And I quote, do you have this in your lines? Well, as I tongue in cheek try to answer this courteously, dogs are not machines, they're not toys, they're not stuffed toys, they're live animals, and they have the right to protect themselves. And I don't know, I wasn't there, but if this dog was asleep, Someone startled the dog and they instinctively turned when something touched them when they were asleep. Now, I do desensitize my dogs and puppies to being touched when they're asleep that they usually just stretch and smile knowing that this is a good thing, not a bad thing, that something is touching them while they're sleeping. But now some dogs can be a little more reactive than others. But here is the problem with blaming the dog. So the uh, dog is laying there. The 10 or 12 year old child comes and gets partially on the dog. And at two, so think about this, eight week old puppy is a toddler. Then they become a teenager and an adolescent. And then they're grown and 
all grown dogs do not appreciate the children being in their face and in their space. And it's, I feel like, incorrect to say, well, I demand that this dog let my children sit on it, pull its tail, and pull, hang off its ears and get in its face. Now, I, I just saw this the other day. Two precious little boys, probably four and six, were hanging all over this eight-month-old uh, dog. And, and he's about to go through puberty. And I was just saying to the owner, the problem with that, some dogs will tolerate that. And at a moment that he might not tolerate it, if the child is right here, you cannot prevent the dog from snapping at the child. You can't because you're not between the child and the dog. And that's why we say, if the child is under 10 or 12 years old, do not even allow them free reign access to the dog. We say protect your puppy from the children. That's good advice. So, my husband's calling again. <laughs> He's terribly upset. Moose is behind me. <laughs> he headed to the oil change. So, I, let me just wrap this up. I'm not saying a golden retriever might have acted the same way, but I tell people this. If you want a dog that your children can roll around in the floor with, get a Labrador, get a golden retriever, get a Collie. The second line of your contract reads, you are purchasing a working guard dog. And I tell people this too. <clears throat> I think guns are incredibly safe. Guns are safe, right? Now, not dog isn't a gun. A dog is a live animal that thinks for himself. But just because guns are safe, I'm not going to let my two-year-old play with my pistol. Because that's not safe. So, let's use some common sense here and realize maybe even if the puppy tolerated this behavior previously as an adult, they may not tolerate the children pushing on their space or getting in their face. And not everyone really socializes or desensitizes their dogs to these things. Uh, if you can't dremel your dog's toenails, probably doesn't appreciate the children getting in their face. They're not really submitting to you. So think about that. Anyway. So I haven't got back on and emailed this person and I don't want to be ugly and I, of all people, my twin sister was attacked while playing with the, the, the dog's children and they were screaming and they were playing and pushing each other on the swing and he ran half a mile and heard his little girl human laughing and he should have been able to distinguish there was nothing wrong, but he attacked my twin sister and almost killed her when we were in third grade. Tried to kill her. If it wouldn't have been for the lady that lived there, came out and rescued her and picked her up. And this dog, which is a German Shepherd, was ripped her dress off trying to get to my, you know, was in third grade. What did we weigh? I don't know. It was eight years old. Ripped her dress off trying to get to my sister and, and Freeland was kicking this dog and kicking this dog. Praise God. <laughs> the angels were there too. So I can certainly empathize. And I, I think that was a more of a quote unquote unprovoked attack than startling a dog or aggravating a dog that's trying to chew on a bone or trying to eat. And, and, and ultimately, this is disrespectful behavior between the child and the dog. And the dog is being disrespected, and some bull masses don't take well to that. I'm just telling you the truth. So, probably several things need to happen in this home, and that is... So, the reason that we ask that you... I don't care how much you tell an 8-year-old, don't pull the dog's tail. doesn't mean that the 8-year-old can connect... A and B. Pull the dog's tail, the dog might bite you. Pull the dog's tail, the dog. They're not going to connect the dots. But you, as a parent, are responsible for the child and the 
dog. I, I read something the other day on Facebook. A dog uh, had mauled a child at this birthday party, but there was no one outside, and these children, which they saw on some security cameras later, this little boy had a stick, and he had, it, it was a pit bull, and I'm, I love pit bulls. The only pit bulls I've ever met have been wonderful family dogs. Uh, but the boy had hit the dog five or six times, and the next time he went to hit the dog, the dog had had enough. And I don't remember if the boy died, but anyway, it was bad. It was really bad. And that was 